Hi there and welcome. Today's video is going to be a relatively long review of the Perfect Sketchbook Signature Series 2021 by Etcher. As you can see here, it has 52 pages, 300 GSM, 100% cotton paper, and the size is B5, which is between an A4 and A5 size. This is their most expensive sketchbook. So you get it inside of a box, inside of another box. This sketchbook costs 70 euros. So it's my most expensive sketchbook that I own. And I was very happy to receive it as a birthday gift from my colleagues. On the sleeve, you can find the same information as on the first box. Not too many people seem to own this sketchbook. And the one that I've seen on the internet more often is the brown version, which is the cold pressed paper. The blue one that I have here is hot press paper, meaning it's supposed to be smoother. Here you can see that it's the limited edition from 2021. There's also one from 2023, which I believe has fewer pages. But this older version happened to still be in stock at one of my local art shops. The paper is Fabriano Artistico paper and slightly off-white. Etcher basically has three ranges of sketchbooks and this is their most expensive one. I also own their cheapest one, which is called the Etcher Lab or Etcher Everyday Sketchbook. I have reviewed this on my channel before and this is it side by side. Both of these are in B5 format, but I swear the signature series is larger and they both include 52 pages, but the Everyday Sketchbook has thinner paper weight at 220 GSM instead of 300 GSM. And keep in mind that the newer Signature Series from 2023 has fewer pages. In comparison to the Signature Series, the Everyday Sketchbook also has whiter paper. One of the key features of the Signature Series Sketchbook are the decked edges. You can see them here and get an impression of the thick paper. Interestingly, there is also the Fabriano Artistico logo embedded into this paper on six pages on the right side. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think I would prefer not having this or having it on the left side where I tend to paint less often. But I've actually painted over it once by now and it doesn't show up too much. Now I'm going to try to show you the paper grain. For hot press paper, I was actually surprised how visible the paper grain is. There is a sort of diagonally striped texture, but only on what I will call the front side of the paper for now. The other side has sort of a more grainy, ambiguous texture. Overall, my first impression of the sketchbook was a very high quality product. There are a couple of pages where you can see the glue that they've used in addition to the stitching, but that is very common for a sketchbook. And same as my other Etcher sketchbook, the pages are sort of separately glued to a page that is attached to the cover. And you can see this both in the front and the back of the sketchbook. There is also a sleeve at the back of the sketchbook with a bit of information about the sketchbook. Most of it is the same as what was written on the box and on the sleeve. But they have also included a very kind warning when you're working on both pages of the sketchbook that paint might seep through the gaps of the signatures. But despite reading this warning, of course, this did happen to me. So this is something to watch out for, but it's not the fault of the sketchbook or the manufacturer. I ran a couple of tests in the back of the sketchbook. My first impression was that paint dries very evenly. Masking fluid is perfectly fine to use, but it's kind of hard to lift paint. And this paper is better for layering. And during testing, I had my first oopsie with the paint seeping onto other pages. Now, based on these tests, I went into my painting and I thought I can't really lift anything at all, only to realize much later that you can in fact lift. It just heavily depends on how staining your paint is. By comparison, my other Etcher sketchbook lets you lift almost anything, so this is what I've gotten used to. Now I'm going to get into my speed paintings. This is Princess Leia from Star Wars. And here's my reference image on the left side. Now the drawing for this 
painting was absolutely wonderful. This paper felt really great to draw on and the painting process was also very nice. I was working very carefully and slowly because I was still under the impression that I cannot lift my paint and I only realized that I was wrong about this when I got to her hair. This was a joy to paint. I really loved layering all of the colors, especially on her cheeks. Although I always say that the paints dry a lot lighter than they look when they are wet. So I had to go over my painting several times to darken some of my values. I also noticed that the grain of the paper, which felt relatively strong to me initially, really didn't make too much of a difference and didn't bother me at all while I was painting. I was definitely able to get a good amount of detail. And now I'm getting to her hair and realizing that I can lift my paint. So you will see me go through some extreme changes when it comes to the hair while I'm trying to figure out how to paint it. I know how to draw hair, but I don't necessarily know how to paint hair. So I even tried out a fan brush in between to get the shapes that I wanted with my brush. Now this is between three to four hours of footage sped up very, very fast so that I can t keep talking about this with you without boring you to death. Because I'd very much like to keep your attention for the part that comes after this one. Because after finishing this painting, I was extremely pleased and happy and felt that this had really been a very positive and relaxing painting experience. And then I got to the left page and was really, really confused. It already started out on a weird foot with my reference image. This is a painting by Brian Root. Normally I avoid working off other people's artwork, but I thought as long as it's for practice, I'm not selling this and I make it clear that it is based on someone else's work, then it is going to be okay. But this sketch already started out weird because when I got to her hands, I realized that one of them has five fingers without the thumb. So six in total. And after trying to fix this for some time, I just gave up and left this hand out. And then her other hand was also weird. When I tried this pose with my own hand, it felt very uncomfortable. And there's also something weird with a middle finger. So I tried drawing this based on my own fingers and that's why hers ended up looking so stubby. In between I also started using some stills from the movie as references. So this painting was more awkward and I felt a lot less confident in my sketch. But it just felt very different as a painting experience as well. I have actually done five more paintings in the sketchbook just to be absolutely sure. And what this basically comes down to is whether or not you are painting on the front or the back side of this paper. My first painting, the one on the right side, was on the front side. And the front side has this sort of diagonal texture. And the one that I'm painting right now is on the back side of the paper, which has a bit more of a grainy texture. And on both pages, the paint dries relatively fast, but on the back side, I had much more problems with getting even washes or a smooth gradient or even just very sharp edges for my lines. This became more obvious when I got to her hood and all of my lines were sort of fuzzy around the edges. So in a moment, you will see me come in with a white gel pen to fix some of my lines. Overall, the painting on the left side of this page and what I believe is the back side of the paper just felt a lot more challenging. Here are a couple of close-ups of these fuzzy lines that I mentioned, where you can also see the texture of the paper more clearly. And on my next painting on the back side of this paper, the paint also seemed to retreat from the bottom of the page. So this has definitely impacted my impression of the sketchbook. I have never felt the difference between working on the front and the back side 
in a sketchbook this keenly. This doesn't mean that the back side of the paper is unusable. It just means that it's a bit harder to work with, at least if you're working in a tight and controlled style like I am. I like this paper enough that I might buy this for myself at some point in the future, but then I would definitely avoid working on the back side just to make life easier on myself. Considering that I have it in sketchbook format now, I do not want to skip all of the back sides. So I looked for other ways to use the back side or other media to use on it, and I found that water soluble pencils work really well with the back side. This effectively solves the problem of getting fuzzy lines or edges and I actually prefer the more grainy texture of the backside of the paper with water soluble pencils because the more noticeable diagonal stripes of the front side still showed up very strongly with them. So this definitely works although the colors faded a lot so I went over them again with some more watercolors. In conclusion, I think this is a really great sketchbook with a very big but because the back side of this paper is more difficult to use and behaves different from the front side. This may not matter too much depending on your style or what you use your sketchbook for. The sketchbook is also bound in such a way that sometimes both pages in a spread will be back sides of the paper and there are actually two more back sides than front sides because the front sides are glued to the cover. I have definitely found ways to use the back side of this paper, so I'm not too worried, but I have marked down which pages are the back side and which are the front side so that I can take this into account when deciding what to paint or which materials to use. This brings us to the question, is this worth the price? I think in terms of material cost alone, it's realistic for the sketchbook to cost at least 50 or 60 euros just for the paper and then there's the hardcover on top of it and the decked edges. This is just based on some prices I looked up if I were to buy this paper on its own. So I think it's not outrageously priced. Basically I would say get the sketchbook if you want to treat yourself. I have painted what I'm considering to be one of my best paintings in this sketchbook and I'm well on my way to complete another one. So I definitely love the sketchbook and I'm going to paint a lot more in it. As always, thank you for watching and I'd love to hear your thoughts. See you next time. Bye!